you know, another thing I'll touch on with songwriting, um, which <clears throat> was, it's, I've a good friend of mine now that's in the music business. I, I don't like throwing people's names out there, but he's a very well-known artist in country music. And he and I have been talking for a while and, um, we may or may not have sang a song together in North Carolina, but he and I were talking about songwriting and songwriting's weird for some people. Like, um, so like ain't got a dollar is one that I'll give a good example of. I could, I almost say I didn't write ain't got a dollar. It just sort of came to me like very, and he shared a, a similar experience. Like he said, he was driving down the interstate one day and um, one of his most popular songs like this almost came to him like very um like i i remember i i gotten out of the shower and i was drying off in the bathroom and it just hit me like ain't got a dollar don't need a dime like the whole song just came to me all almost almost like it, somebody was putting it in my head and to the point that like i remember i was i felt emotional about it i was tearing up and stuff and i ran into the other room and so i always save all my stuff on my phone so i opened a google drive and just started typing all the words in and it's like the whole song was done in 5 minutes it's like it's weird but i've had that yeah. i've had that happen cool, multiple eh? times yeah it's like and i don't know what that is i don't know if that's um it's revelation it's weird yeah it's weird how parts of and i don't know if it even is if if it even is your own brain or if it's like somehow we're just picking up signals that are flying around the same way that's yeah, cell it, signals that's a fly complicated around, but. problem, man. That that's a complicated problem. Well, you know, your comments about prioritization, I think, are dead on. Because you might say, well, why put an arbitrary limit on what you're going to say? And the answer is, well, as you said with a journal, well, you could say it in ten thousand words, but that's ten thousand words, or you could say it in fifty words. And if you're going to say it in fifty words, you better make damn sure you got the words right. And so the limitation of the form forces you to prioritize. You got that dead on. That's exactly right. And that if it's, if it's prioritized properly, you've struck to the core, right? You've got to the treasure. You've, 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 you've extracted the gist or the spirit. And people can tell. And the reason they can tell is because they have these inchoate and ill-formed emotions and ideas that are sort of floating around. And there's way too many of them. And then you come along and you go, here's the structure that captures all of that and it's such a relief to them because they can leave a bunch of that behind then too right because if you get to the core you don't have to carry along the extra burden and a great poet does that a great musician does that they strike right they they hit the target right in the middle and everyone can feel that it's interesting too because a lot of the comments i've gotten on all the videos have been i don't the comment will say something to the effect of i hate country music but i love listening to this and it reminds me of like there's certain pe there's certain people in the rap music game that like you people who don't ever listen to rap will still listen to them because lyrically they're able to like they they I guess that's I guess you kind of hit the nail on the head of what it is but it's yeah that's exactly that's a, it's it's a weird phenomenon but it, it's almost like it, that that idea isn't just limited to people like certain genres of music for their sound, but, but they really connect with the lyrics of songs more than anything. It's the sound is just kind of there as a, as an, as an add on, you know, that's like, it's, it's music is very, it's very interesting how music is like the fact, it's just a weird thing to think about how people can sing songs and find such peace and hope from them anyway. But it like is, it is. Music's a man. Music is a yeah. mystery, man. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I made a piece of art representing music back in 1985. It took me about four months to make. And now that's the logo I use. It's called The Meaning of Music. And I was really fascinated because I was really interested in nihilism and meaninglessness at that time, because you can make a pretty coherent, rational case for nihilism and meaninglessness, you know, looking at the primacy of suffering in human life and its and its finite nature. And I thought, well, what the hell? What's the what's the argument against that because we do have finite lives and people do suffer and there seems to be a lot of pointless misery in the world. What's the argument against that logically? And I thought, well, maybe the argument against that isn't exactly logical. Maybe it's it's like the phenomenon of meaning itself. And I thought, well, where does that manifest itself most strikingly and irrefutably? And the answer to that seems to me to be in music because 
I remember at about the same time I'd gone to a Ramones concert and they were like major league punk rockers. And my wife and I went to this concert and we watched the mosh pit where these like punks were banging into each other at high velocity, very aggressively, right? But they were celebrating the meaning of the music at the same time. And so even if you're a nihilistic punk rocker who hates the world, you go to a concert and the music grips you and it and it grips you in a meaningful way. It's like meaning itself speaking to people directly. And there's no criticizing it. There's nothing stupider than, to, no one sounds stupider than when they're criticizing music per se. You know, you can say, well, I don't like that piece of music. And, but nobody in their right mind ever says, well, what do you listen to music for, you idiot? Because almost everybody has a genre. And music mm -hmm. speaks directly to people in a way that argument can't refute. It's, it's really quite a mystery. Yeah. Yeah. And this is, and, and I think that's, that's a perfect example, particularly with Richmond North of Richmond, because it had like, it definitely, ex it, it went beyond all bounds. You know, it, it touched people that wouldn't listen to country music. It touched people that weren't even in the country that it, like it, <clears throat> it just seemed like, I guess, because of through the lyrics, like it just, it definitely, it transcended all those all those boundaries that you would normally expect things to stay within. And that's what kind of disrupted, I guess, it really disrupted things, uh, people's perception of what, of what is, you know, it's, it's, it is a weird, it's a weird thing for me to look, to even look at now um, to try to make sense of it. You've probably heard by now that you should be using a VPN when you connect to the internet. But if you're like me, adding an extra step to anything you do every day just sounds like a hassle. Well, let me tell you, if you knew how easy it was to protect your connection with ExpressVPN, you'd be doing it already. ExpressVPN is the easiest way to browse safely, securely, and it's just better. ExpressVPN gets rid of all those things you hate about VPNs. It's a VPN done right. First of all, it's blazing fast. Lots of other VPNs slow your connection to the point where it's not even worth it to connect. But ExpressVPN doesn't lag or buffer. You can stream in HD with no issues. And using it couldn't be easier. Just open the ExpressVPN app, click one button, and enjoy instant protection across all of your devices. The fact is, once you connect to ExpressVPN, you don't even realize you have it on. No wonder it's been called the best VPN by CNET. Right now, go to expressvpn.com slash Jordan. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash Jordan and get three extra months free. Expressvpn.com slash Jordan. Well, in one way, you could say, well, you know, it's what a coincidence that this happened to you. And well, that's true in some way, but there's a way it's not true because what you did and I don't know how you did it or what did it through you or any of those things is you, and I figured this out too, listening to on YouTube some, you've actually been paying attention for a few years, you know, and while you're paying attention, you're, you know, you're gathering information about what's worth paying attention to, right? So you're gathering up all these observations about the state of the world. And then your poetic imagination goes to work on that. And it extracts out the gist, and you put that in a song. And if you hit the mark right, everybody goes, oh my God, that's just exactly the right song for the moment. And of course it is, because you've been paying attention. Look, I talked to Jimmy Carr about how he prepares his comedy sets, and other comedians have told me this. It's like, before they go out on the road, they go do like 50 comedy shows at small clubs. And they try out their new material, and most of it flops, hey? But now and then, every, say, 10% of the time, they'll tell a joke, and everybody in the room will burst out laughing. And the smart comedians go, check, we'll keep that. And then they do 50 shows, and they gather the 5% of the material or the 2% of the material from each show that's the best because the audience told them. And then they go out on the road, and everyone laughs because the, the jokes are a reflection of what the audience needs, you know? And... If you're paying attention and your poetic imagination is gathering up the right information and you put that in a song, you're going to hit the space that people need to articulate perfectly and then it's going to be a hit. And obviously something like that happened to you and that's not just fluke, even though, you know, you're fortunate to be enough to be healthy and here you are for it and all of that. You can't just think of that as fluke. It's, you know, you hit the target right mm. for some reason. You think, do you know why? Do you have any sense of why? Um, I mean, really, my gut, my gut feeling is that it's, 
that's above my head. I really think they were like I I commented this on Joe Rogan too, but I really think it was I don't know. I I and I really don't know what to think of any of it, but um Yeah, I bet. My my gut feeling tells me that it's whether whether this is whether the, op, the I don't know which one's the chicken and which one's the egg, but I feel like I've been put in this opportunity to try to share some of the message of what you and I discussed today and what was touched on about, I mean, it's just the importance of trying to reintroduce God into modern society and us trying to at least limit some of the, some of the horrible things that we do to each other, you know, like in today's political climate and the way the world, like I, yeah, I just feel like maybe it was just an opportunity. Maybe the song was just a vessel of an opportunity for me to be able to have the time to, have these conversations and get things and plus not to mention, like I said, I think it's just, um, I think part of it maybe goes back to all those conversations I had with people in my, in my work. Cause I talked to people from all over the country and Canada and, and they're, and they're the conversations you have in those environments aren't in any way. I mean, they're very open and honest, you know, it's just two people, two people talking, talking about life. There isn't any like, there isn't anything to prove in those type of conversations. So I think maybe that gave me a very, um, an unusually transparent view of how people are feeling. Cause I was able well, to that's, almost- That's an excellent observation because one of the things I have noted is that people who emerge as leaders, and I mean, genuine leaders, I don't mean the fo- fake, you know, persona psychopath types. I mean, the genuine leaders, some of them, some of whom are accidental leaders, they listen right? They've gone out and they've heard people and they've gathered their stories together and then they amalgamate them. And so it's very interesting that you point out the relationship between that and the honest conversations you had while you're doing your sales work. You know, that's very much akin to Jimmy Carr going out to the audiences and testing his material to see what clicks, right? It's that dialogue between you and the crowd that you're attempting to communicate with. So that's very cool.